Here we have an Edimex wireless router. It's an AC1200 standard dual band router with VPN. Says it has says it has easy setup. The model is BR6478 ACV2. So it's a really cool looking router. It's kind of sci-fi looking. I don't know. I think it looks kind of cool. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug everything in and we're gonna put it, plug it into the computer, get everything set up, and get it online and functioning. So there's also gonna be a trick if you if you're someone who has a previous router that was working and maybe you bought this and you can't seem to get it online, but you had another router that was working, we're gonna have a trick for that called Mac spoofing. So let's get into it. I always like to start with plugging in my modem. So I have this cable plugged into my modem in the other room. The other one is plugged into the modem. This end is gonna go into the blue port here. It's labeled internet. So we're gonna plug it into blue port. Again, that's our modem. Now we need, gotta plug in the power source, which I have handy right here. And we're gonna plug in this blue Cat5 cable that came with the router. We're gonna plug it into any one of these yellow ports, it doesn't matter. I always like to start with port number one because that makes sense to me. See if I can do this with one hand. One hand in the camera, one hand on the cable. Man, this is, there we go, almost got it. There it goes. So the other end is gonna go into the computer. The port on your computer might be in a different spot, but it should look something similar to those yellow ports right there. But mine's right here, so I'm going to plug that in. And some of these routers have a power button. This one doesn't seem to have a power button. It does have lights on it uh, though, so it is working. So let's turn this thing around. Get this over first. Turn this around. There goes the box. Kind of hard working with one hand. Well, we got something going on the computer. We had this message pop up over here. So we're gonna, do you want your PCD to be discoverable? I'm gonna say no. See if it's one of those ones that automatically brings up the browser for us. Some of them do that. But anyways, we have it plugged in. Um, so before I switch over to the computer screen here, I just wanna show you on the bottom of this router, there's a sticker and most routers have this where they have the like the wireless information and the MAC address. If you previously had a router that was plugged in to your internet connection and it was working and you just bought this to upgrade or just to switch to this and you can't get online or whatever. Regardless, it's, it's good to go to your old router and get the MAC address off of it and write it down. Like I have mine. I have mine written down on this envelope right here. That's my old MAC address for my old router, but it's not this MAC address. Don't write this one down. I'm just showing you like how you would find it on your router. It should be like on the back or on the bottom. There's a little sticker and it'll say MAC. And you wanna write that down. So that's mine and we're gonna need that later. If it's not on the router, if you have the box, sometimes it's on the box. Let's see if this one has it on the box. Um, is it right there? No. Is it there? No. This one doesn't seem to have it on the box. Some of them do. This one doesn't seem to. Um, if you don't have the MAC address or don't know where to find it or just can't do it for whatever reason, don't worry. We still have a way to make this work. And uh, you might not even need it. If this is the first router you're setting up on a, on a new internet connection, you might not even need this. But anyways, let's go teleport into the computer screen. Once you're on the computer screen, you want to open up a browser. You can use Chrome if you want. You can use Internet Explorer. I've been using uh, Edge. I'm going to close these out because I'm not using routers anymore. We're going to open up Edge. 
And oh, it looks like automatically it went to it. But what you want to do is you want to go to http colon slash slash edimax dot setup. There's no dot com or anything. You don't need to worry about this part. That just automatically goes in there. You want to go to edimax dot setup. So once we're here, we can go ahead and click get started. The default mode of this product is Wi-Fi router mode. It connects to your modem via ethernet cable and provides internet access for your computers, smartphones, tablets, and the other network devices. We're going to go, we're going to leave it as Wi-Fi router mode because that's what the whole purpose of this video. Yes, I need a Wi-Fi router. The IQ setup wizard can help detect your internet connection type and walk through the step by step so you can set, set up your device manually. So we're going to go ahead and go through the wizard because that's just the easy way to do it. Next, please connect one end of, the, of an ethernet cable to your modem and connect the other end to your internet. We already did that. Next. Connecting to the internet. This is not going to work. I already know ahead of time. So. If this might work for you, but if it doesn't, don't worry, we're going to be able to fix it. And I know it's not going to work because I have another router that I use on a, on a normal basis in my house. And this is just a new router for me. So it's, well, it's a different router. So the internet service provider is not going to recognize it. Please select your internet service type. If you're not sure, please contact your internet service provider. So if you go here, you're going to select dynamic IP, but if you know what these other ones are, you will know which one to select because your internet service provider will give you that information. But for the most of us, if you don't know, if you have no idea, then you probably are going to use the dynamic IP option. That's what I'm going to use and I'm going to go to next. Um, host name, MAC address. It looks like this is going to give us the easy way. So. This is the information that we're going to use for our router. And we're actually going to need the MAC address that we wrote down. Remember, I wrote, my, I wrote mine down on, on an envelope. And here, you're going to want to enter in a MAC address of your old router that was working. So for me, it's going to be 001D7E0D. E four four D. Do not hit this button. If you clone Mac, it's going to clone your computer's Mac address. So if you hit that button, it's it's going to erase all that and put something in there you don't want in there. Also, don't use what I use because it won't work for you. Um, host name. It's just a name for your router. Uh, I'll just call it Wi-Fi router for no particular reason. <laughs> Um, we're going to obtain the IP address of the server, the DNS server address automatically. The ISP is going to give us all the information. So all we need is the host name, which is whatever you want it to be. It's just the name of your router and the MAC address. But if you already have, you know what, let's do this different. We don't need that yet because some of you won't need that. So I'm not going to put, I'm not going to put the MAC address in there. So let's just see what happens. If you type in the host name without the MAC address, because most of us won't need that. Next, we'll do the MAC address later. Connecting to the internet. I'm expecting it's not going to work, but for you, it may work. Connecting to the internet, Wi-Fi router, Edimax. So once again, I'm expecting this to not work for me. For, for those of us who it doesn't work for, we're going to fix it later. Unless it just makes us do it now, then we might have to. No response from the remote network that was expected. Next. So this is where you configure your uh, Wi-Fi network names. These are the default names. This is the 2.4 gigahertz network. This is the five gigahertz network. 
you can set your password. I'm just going to go with Wi-Fi password, one, two, three, all caps, and Wi-Fi password, one, two, three, all caps. I wouldn't recommend you use that password because that's a really crappy password. Just use something more creative. And you can tell by the, when you name these things, you, you want you want to name it something so you can tell if it's the 2.4 gigahertz or if it's the 5 gigahertz. For example, this one says 2.4 gigahertz in the name. This one says 5 gigahertz in the name. So you might want to, sometimes people just put a name in here with nothing without that. And then on the five gigahertz, sometimes you'll just put the number five in there somewhere. So you know it's the five gigahertz because when you open up the Wi-Fi list, it'll show both of them right next to each other and you won't know which one is which. So like I said, I would recommend at least on the five gigahertz, put something so you know that that's your five gigahertz network. Next, there's a summary of the settings. Next. So like I said, some of you, this, this might work. Remember we didn't put in a MAC address. Some of you, this is going to work and you won't have to do the MAC address spoofing part. So if you can, once this is all done, if you can get on the internet, then you don't need to do any MAC address spoofing, but I know I'll need to. So don't worry if yours doesn't work, we're going to, we're going to fix that up. Typically what it's doing now is it, it applied the settings and it, the router needs to restart. So this kind of countdown here is really just pre-programmed to last a certain amount of time to, for the router to restart is usually what happens. And then it just kind of refreshes the page when it's done. But I like how it uses uh, edmx.setup. It's nice and easy on some routers. I mean, you could use the IP address, but some routers you have to use like, like for TP link, it's like TP link, wifi.net or something like that. Um, but this is edmx.setup is really easy to remember. Congratulation with no S. Awesome. You've successfully completed the setup. Please connect to the device's new Wi-Fi network name listed below. Please access edmx.setup from your computer's web browser. All right, so we set up those two networks and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn on um, Wi-Fi. You know, I might not even need to get on Wi-Fi, so I'm gonna try it from right here, see what happens. Before I connect to Wi-Fi, we're just gonna work, since we're already plugged into the router, I would assume this would work, just going right to it. All right. So, the default name is, I want caps lock off, it says up here, the default name is admin, default password is 1234, see if that works. And we're in. So, at this point, some of you may be able to go up here and go to the internet. That should work for some of you. If you're setting up this router on a brand new internet connection, this might work for you. But for those of us where the internet is not working yet, we need to do some MAC address spoofing. So the trick here is to figure out, it's probably in this internet option here, WAN setup. So here's where we type in the MAC address. So if you had a router previously plugged in, then you want to type in that router's MAC address right here. Remember I showed you earlier, you can find it on the sticker and you're going to type in the MAC address. So for me, it's zero, zero caps lock on one D seven E zero D E four, four D. Now, if you had your computer, plugged directly in your modem before and now you're just getting a router for the first time 
and you had your computer on the internet directly plugged into the modem, then if you clone your Mac, if you just click this button right here, it'll clone your computer's Mac address and that'll work. That should work for you. But if you had a, any other kind of router plugged in before, that won't work. And once you type this in, don't hit this button because it'll take it out. Now, if you, if you don't have the MAC address and you're still lost and you don't know anything about the MAC address, the solution for you would be to call your internet service provider and just say you got a new router and you need, you, you're having trouble getting on the internet and you need help. And they'll just reset it for you and it'll be, it'll probably be, be really easy. So if you don't have the, if you don't have a MAC address to put in here, or if that's too confusing, or if you can't figure it out, just call up your ISP and this is, you don't even have to mention this. You just say, I got a new router and they'll, they'll most likely know what to do. So once you type that in, you go to save settings. Settings have been saved. Please click here to restart the router and bring the new settings into effect. Okay, so we're going to have to restart the router. And it's going to wait 90 seconds again. So that's a tad annoying, but we have to wait for the router to reset. So that's how it's going to be. So if you have uh, this, this same trick is not only unique to this router. This is a very common thing that you can do with almost every router. So I, there's some cheap ones out there that don't let you do the MAC address cloning. But if you, if you switch to a different router, usually what happens is when you, inst when you plug the router in, it'll, the ISP will pull the MAC address off of that router. So it'll know which router you have. So as soon as you bring a different router and plug that in, it's going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa. That is not your router. What is going on? And it won't let you connect to the internet. So if you just, again, it's not bad or illegal. You can just do this thing called MAC address cloning or MAC address spoofing. It's the, both, both of us are interchangeable. Um, you use that and you plug in your, uh, or you're typing in your, MAC address from your old router and your ISP, ISP will be like, oh, okay, okay, it's all right. And then you'll be able to get online. So hopefully that's what's going to happen right now. We've got seven seconds left before this page refreshes. So after this, we should be able to get on the internet. System restarting, please wait. I guess it wants me to click OK. So now I should be able to, oh, it already loaded it for me. So yeah, I'm already on the internet. So I'll just try again just to make sure. Oops. Google. There we are. We're on the internet just because of that MAC address spoofing. So let's go through here real quick. We've got, I mean, we, that, that was pretty much the purpose of this video was to get online, but let's just kind of look through here to see what settings are in here. Um, it's not, this is not like a thorough walkthrough or anything. Let's just kind of look through here. And just to get familiar with the interface, you got LAN settings, you can change your IPs, uh, DHCP settings, you got separate menus for your 2.4 gigahertz and your 5 gigahertz wireless. So basic, you can come in here and this is where you change your, the name of your network and you can change your, your password to get on your 2.4 gigahertz network here. And you got your guest network, WPS. I always recommend that WPS is disabled. So I would just check that button. I'm not going to do it here because I don't need to. Schedule, wireless schedule. So you can turn your wireless on and off, it looks like, at different periods of time. You got your 5 gigahertz settings. It's all the same pages right there. You got your USB, USB basic settings. If you can plug a USB device in and then scan for it and you got all kinds of things you can set on here. Advanced settings, what's in there? Or you can share it. You got firewall. DMZ. Denial of service. You got QoS settings in here so you can um, prioritize certain types of traffic. See, here's where all your NAT stuff is and 
see your static routing you really won't need to play with this stuff unless you know like if you like i'm just showing you this just to show you that it's here and what the interface is like so a lot of this stuff uh some people i mean you may not be familiar with a lot of this stuff that's okay i'm just showing you that it's here if you want to do port forwarding that's something that a lot of gamers use or if you have a server running this is where you do it administration so you got your time zone password and there's all kinds of stuff in here so anyways we got it online we got it plugged in i hope you enjoyed the video i hope you learned something and thank you for watching peace